All right, part seven. This is going to be going over chapter seven and part of nine with the ions and the ionic bonding. All right, 64 says, explain how the following elements become an ion. Remember, everybody but the noble gases are not happy with their situation. They want to do something to get the octet. So they're either going to give up or gain electrons, or they're going to do what the covalent guys do. They're going to share electrons to get the octet. Right now we're talking about the ions, so these are the ones who have given up or gained electrons. So now they have an imbalance. They have more or less electrons than their protons, so then they have a charge. So letter A, any group one element. Well, group one element ends in S1. They have one extra uh, electron out there, so they don't want it. They want to lose it, so there's your answer for letter A. They want to lose one electron, and then the, that'll give them the octet. Letter B, any element with six valence electrons. Six valence electrons mean the, means they're two away from eight, so they have to just gain two. C, nitrogen and phosphorus, you have to find out what group they're in. They're in group five, or 15 if you go by the other method, and they're going to gain three more electrons to get up to the eight. So whatever group number they're in, um, that's how many valence electrons they have, and then figure out what else they need to get to eight. Letter D, any element with three valence electrons. If you have three, no one's going to give you five, so you're going to lose three. E, iron, with a Roman numeral 2 in parentheses. That 2 means that's the charge. It's a metal, so it's going to be a cation. That's going to be positive, so it's a positive 2. And then it's going to lose two electrons in order to become positive 2. Finally, F, an element whose configuration ends in 5s2, 4d10, 5p5. Now you're looking for valence electrons, which are the electrons in the outermost energy level. So completely ignore this 4d10 here. That's not the highest energy level, the 5 is. So you're going to look at the entire fifth energy level, 5s2, 5p5. The 2 and the 5 is 7. So you have 7 valence electrons. That means you want to gain one more to get to the 8. All right, number 65. 65 is filling out a table so you know the differences between cations and anions. Cations are going to be metals. Remember, you can remember that T in the middle of cation and the T in the middle of the word metal. Cations also are positive. You can remember the T in the middle of the word cation kind of looks like a plus sign or a positive sign. And then finally, how do you become positive? You become positive when you lose electrons. If you don't have as many electrons as you used to, that means you're going to end up with less, po or less negatives and therefore more positives. Anions, there's two ends in the word anion. One can stand for nonmetal. This N is nonmetal. The other N is negative. Anions are negative nonmetals, and they, begain, they become negative because they gain electrons. They have more negatives, so now they're negative. All right, number 66. Number 66 is asking us about parentheses. It says, when are parentheses used in writing formulas for ionic compounds, and then why are Roman numerals used? Well, let's tackle both of these. Parentheses are used when there's more than one polyatomic ion. So for instance, if I'm dealing with magnesium, which makes a plus two charge, and it's bonding with hydroxide, and that's a negative one. I want to indicate that there's one magnesium bonding with two of these guys, an OH and another OH. If I just write MgOH2 without parentheses, then I'm really telling somebody that it's one magnesium, one oxygen, and two hydrogens, and that's not what I want to imply. I want one magnesium, but I want two OHs, two packages or two sets of OH, so I have to put the whole package in parentheses. Whatever you've studied goes in parentheses. Uh, let's do another one. What if aluminum is bonding with uh, nitrate? We're going to take the charges, take the three and put it down here, take the one and put it down here, which you don't need to write, it's an imaginary one, and then you look at this and you want one aluminum, and then three packages of nitrate. We got this three out here saying three of these guys, three sets of nitrate, so you have to put all of nitrate in parentheses. If you don't, it's going to look like 33 oxygens, which you don't want. So put the whole NO3 in parentheses. Okay. All right, Roman numerals. Roman numerals are used in the name when a metal can make more than one charge. These are your D block guys and under the stair step. These guys. If you see that they're involved in a compound, you should immediately check your reference sheet and see if it's on the list. Because if it's on the list, that means it makes more than one charge and you have to use Roman numerals. For instance, if I had uh, FeO versus Fe2O3. Now I look at this and say, well, I can't just call this iron oxide because I don't know which one I'm talking about. This is iron oxide, that's iron oxide. So which iron is it? 
In this one, if we uncrisscross our charges, we put a negative one up there and we put a positive one up here. Now before you decide that iron makes a plus one charge, you need to ask yourself, is the nonmetal charge correct? Is, does oxygen make a negative one? And the answer is no. The oxygen makes a negative two all the time. So we double the oxygen and then we double this one and over here we're going to write iron two because we've doubled it and then oxide. Now over here if we uncrisscross the charges we put a negative two up there and we put a plus three over here and then we ask ourselves is the nonmetal correct? Does oxygen make a negative two? And the answer is correct. So that means that this one's correct. So this is going to be iron with a Roman numeral three oxide. So now we can tell. If somebody says iron 2 oxide, we know it's this one. If somebody says iron 3 oxide, then we know it's this one. Okay, now the big table. You're going to have to complete the following table uh, here, and you're going to do something like this also on your exam. I've written on all the names in red, so you can check those out. I'm going to work out the, uh, the charges, the ratios, and the formulas with the pen here. So we've got sulfur or sodium bonding with sulfur. So sodium is your metal that always comes first, and that's going to be your cation because it's positive. So it's going to be plus one. Sulfur, you have to look up what group it's in. It's in group six, so it has six electrons already. It needs two more, so it's going to gain two and become negative two. Crisscross the charges, or just think about it logically. You need two sodiums to get one sulfur happy. They each need to give up an electron. Here's the other sodium. I'll write it in. So you're going to end up with two sodiums each giving up one to make the one happy, so it's going to be a two to one ratio. And if you write it out in chemistry terms, it's Na2S, and that's sodium sulfide. Remember, Ide is the sulfur right off the periodic table. There's no sulfate here. No oxygen's bonded to it. We'll get to that next. All right, we've got potassium and sulfate. Potassium's plus one. Sulfate, you need it to memorize or look up, and it's SO4, negative two. <clears throat> Again, same situation. Potassium can only give up one. Sulfate needs to get two, so you need two potassiums. So they're going to bond on a two to one ratio. In chemistry terms, we write it K2 and then SO4. And I don't use parentheses around SO4 because there's only one of them. There's only one in the ratio, and that's potassium sulfate. All right, aluminum and nitrogen. Nitrogen right off the periodic table, so it's going to be aluminum with a plus three charge, and then nitrogen is going to be negative three. This one's giving up three electrons, this one's taking three. One of these makes one of these happy. So we're going to ignore those little charges. We're just going to write ALN, aluminum nitride, I'd off the periodic table. Now we have nitrate. Aluminum, in this case, is still going to make a plus three, but nitrate is going to be different than nitride. Nitrate is NO3 negative one. How do I know that? I look it up. One aluminum's given up three electrons. Nitrate can only take one each, so it's going to be one, two, three. We're going to have a nitrate here, a nitrate here, and a nitrate here. Three nitrates because they can each take one, and then it's Al, crisscross the charges, NO3, and then put that three down here from the aluminum, and the imaginary one goes down here. And then we don't want 33 oxygen, so we put nitrate in parentheses. That's aluminum nitrate. Now the next one, iron three. This is great because it makes your life easy. You don't have to think about what iron's charge is. It's given to you right here. So this is a plus three, and oxygen is right off the periodic table in group six, so it needs two more electrons. Crisscross your charges. You're going to end up bonding on a two to three ratio, and it's going to be Fe2O3. Calcium and phosphorus. Calcium's plus two. Phosphorus is P minus three. Notice it's not phosphate, it's just phosphorus right off the periodic table. So the ending of the name is gonna be phosphide. Crisscross these guys, it's gonna be a three to two ratio. Ca3P2. All right, gallium. Gallium makes a plus three charge. It's under aluminum, so it does the same thing. And carbonate, you have to memorize, CO3 negative two. Crisscross the charges there. They're going to bond on a 2 to 3 ratio. And here we go. GA2, CO3, 3. I got to put carbonate in parentheses. Strontium. Strontium's plus 2. A little hydroxide is negative 1. It can only take 1. This one's trying to give up 2. A little hydroxide saying, wait, I can only take 1, but I'll go find a friend, so there'll be another hydroxide. So it's going to end up bonding on a 1 to 2 ratio. And then when I write this out, SR with the imaginary 1 from the hydroxide. And then we write OH, and then we put the 2 down here from the, 
from this strontium. Now, we don't want to say we want one strontium, one oxygen, and two hydrogens. We want to show that we want two sets of OH. So two O's, two H's. We've got to put the OH, the whole package you studied, goes in parentheses. And then finally, magnesium and phosphate. Magnesium's plus two. Phosphate, hopefully you've studied that and know it's PO4, negative three. Crisscross the charges and figure out your ratio. And then write it in chemistry terms, Mg3, PO4, two. Now we don't want 42 oxygens. We want two sets of phosphate. So put whatever you studied in parentheses. Okay. All right, let's move on to the next section.